Okay. So one last video for 2020, uh, factor and solve. So we're bringing back our old friend, the equal sign, which means we can finally actually answer the question. So instead of just factoring, we're gonna figure out what X is gonna be and get back to actually solving uh, our quadratics. Okay. So just a couple new things here. First, the big one is that there's an equal sign now. So the first thing we always wanna do is we wanna push everything to the left-hand side. So I'm gonna move this eight over and that's gonna give me, oops, I guess I should do that to both sides. So I'm gonna end up with three X squared minus two X minus eight equals zero. Okay, so there's the key point. We need to have equal zero on one side, okay? And then we sort of ignore the zero for a while and we do what we've been doing. We factor out what we can here. Three X squared minus two X minus eight. Uh, we know how to do that. So I'm gonna do this uh, a little quickly so we don't spend a lot of time on it. Uh, this multiplies to give us negative 24. Uh, our factors of that would be negative six X plus four X. I bring the rest down So three X squared minus eight. I'll put the equals there just so we don't forget about it. Uh, I can factor out a three X here. That leaves X minus two. I can factor out a four on these uh, right two. And that leaves X minus two. That's still equals zero. So I factor out everything outside the parentheses. So that's three X plus four times X minus two still equals zero. Okay, so that's what we've been doing, right? So now I want to, I want to know what values of X will actually make this work. Okay, and the whole, the real beauty of factoring is since really we're just multiplying one thing by another, okay? And we want the answer to be zero. And we know any number times zero is zero. So if I can make either of these quantities, either of these uh, sets of numbers in the parentheses equal zero, then this equation will be true. Okay, so how we do that is we actually we separate what we have into two equations. So I'm going to say either 3x plus 4 needs to equal 0 or x minus 2 needs to equal 0. Okay, so we're going to have two solutions because it's quadratic and we know that two solutions is a, it's a definite possibility. Uh, so now I'm just solving for x, so you know minus 4 minus 4. 3x equals negative 4, divide both sides by 3, and x equals negative 4 thirds. Okay, so that's one answer. And then the right-hand side is a lot easier. It's just plus 2, plus 2. So x equals 2. And there you go. There is our solution. So this is the only real new part, is taking our, our factored equation, separating it out into two parts, solving both of those, and then writing down our answers. So we put this into set notation. Uh, I would always go with the, the smaller value first. I don't think it really matters though, as long as you include both of them in your little curly braces, and that becomes uh, your answer. You can check to make sure this is right. You could either refoil that one and make sure it gets the equation we started with, or, you could substitute either of these values into our equation and see if it works out. Uh, I wouldn't really mess with the fraction one unless you have a calculator handy, but if you check two and it works, then there's a very good chance that your other answer is correct. Okay, but that's it. So let's try one more. So second equation, 10x squared minus 12x equals 16. So again, we start off, we move everything to the left-hand side. So minus 16 minus 16. And that gives us 10x squared minus 12x minus 16 equals zero. Okay, and the reason I wanna do this one is we need to remember all the little tricks that we picked up along the way, uh, ways of making factoring easier, they all still apply. So I can look for, I can look for perfect squares or I can look for a common factor of all three of these. So if I see 10, 12, and 16, those are all even. So I know I can divide everything by two, both sides by two. And I can just make this a little bit easier to work with 
I make it smaller numbers. So I 10 divided by two, it's gonna be five x squared. Uh, 12 divided by two minus six x squared. Uh, negative 16 divided by two is negative eight. And zero divided by two is still zero. Okay, so if you can factor something out from the very beginning, you're gonna have smaller numbers to work with and you get the same thing at the end. So you don't have to do it. I could work with 10, 12, and 16, but it makes the, the actual, the factoring later a little bit more difficult. Okay. Uh, all right, so from here, now we factor it out. So we look for what did these have? Uh, we multiply them together, <laughs> negative 40. Then we look what, what two factors will give us negative 40 and add up to negative six, which is negative 10 and, my space now, positive four, x plus, copy the rest down, five x squared minus eight, still equals zero, don't forget. Uh, we factor it, so I can factor out a five x, that leaves me x minus two, I can factor out a four, so that leaves me x minus two, perfect. Remember, rules haven't changed, we're still looking for the same, same quantity on both sides, not equal zero. So I can rewrite this as five x plus four times x minus two equals zero. And then once I have it completely factored, then remember I just separated into two separate equations. So either five x plus four equals zero or x minus two equals zero. Uh, so, and so you don't have to keep doing the work every time. Uh, just remember, you're always going to have the, the opposite sign of our constant here. So this is always going to be uh, negative 4. And then you're just going to divide it by whatever the coefficient of x is. Divide by 5, divide by 5. So hopefully you don't actually have to do this step. You can just start seeing, okay. 5x plus 4, I know I'm going to have negative 4 divided by 5, and there it is, right, without having to go through the actual steps. And then if it's just x plus or minus a number, remember your answer is always just going to be that number, but with the opposite sign, right? This goes back to the very beginning, right? We've come like full circle. When we started with FOIL, and it gave us the solutions, and it said, can you write this? And you said, of course we can. And now we've written this and we've come up with the solutions and we've done it. We've, we've figured out quadratics until so we got to do the other methods next year. So negative four fifths comma two, that's a good solution. We could double check it, but I'm tired. I don't want to go over 10 minutes here. So I'm going to cut it and then good luck.